All right, guys and gals, we're going to talk about subatomic particles. There are three subatomic particles that we need you to know and understand. Those are protons, neutrons, and electrons. So let's talk about each one of them in a little bit of detail and get more comfortable with them. So what do you say we start? Protons. So protons start with a P. They are positively charged. So hopefully that helps you remember. Protons are positive. So, okay, protons are positive. Where are they in an So they're atom? in the nucleus. Okay. And, and they have mass of one atomic mass unit. And they're, okay, so they're in the nucleus and their mass is equal to one and atomic mass unit. Okay. So let's do neutrons. Okay. Neutrons, neutrons are neutral, which means no charge. Neutrons are neutral. So I'll just write a zero. No charge. Z yeah. Or where do you want to write? No. No charge. Or that. Whatever. Also in the nucleus, also have a mass of one AMU. Okay. Mass equals one AMU. So all the mass seems to be kind of in the nucleus right now. Yeah. And it's going to be positively charged because all we have is protons and neutrons. And then we have electrons. Okay. Electrons are negatively charged. They are outside the electron cloud or where all that empty space is. Outside nucleus, nucleus. I'll put, um, yeah, electron cloud. And they have no mass. They have a little mass, but it's negligible. So we say zero mass. Mass is basically zero AMUs. Yeah, it's so tiny. So most of the volume of the atom is in the electron cloud. Okay. Most of the mass is in the nucleus. Right. And if I were to basically clear this and kind of draw it, we've got those blue protons, we've got those white neutrons, all in that nucleus, and then there's this kind of area, oops, there's kind of this area around where all those electrons are kind of milling in and around. Right. So that huge volume of area is electrons and then the small, dense, positively charged nucleus with protons and neutrons. Right. Okay. So let's talk about then, um, when we're looking at the periodic table and we want to kind of decipher some of the information that's on it, let's see what we can actually look at here. So if you find xenon, which is all the way over to the right in mm -hmm. the last column, mm -hmm. okay, so we see a couple of numbers. There's a 54. We call that the atomic number. Okay, that is the atomic number. That's the number that's on the top. Okay. And that is always going to tell you the number of protons that an atom of xenon will always have. So anytime you have xenon, it will always have 54 protons. Okay, so hydrogen has one, helium has two, xenon has 54. Okay, okay. now this right here is just the... Symbol. Okay, xenon is capital X, lowercase e. Capital and lowercase is a big deal here, so please pay attention to that. And then the bottom number, oh, well, there's the name. Mm -hmm. And then the bottom number is the mass number. So we said all the masses in the nucleus. We know that we have protons and neutrons in the nucleus. Mm -hmm. You know the number of protons because it's atomic number. Mm -hmm. So mass number subtract or protons subtracted from mass number would okay. give you neutrons. And I do notice that there's this, it's a decimal, and if those are one mass unit, it should be a whole number, right? right? Well, this the reason this the one that we have right here. This is the mass number, but it's actually the average atomic mass. But if we we're looking for a straight mass number, it's usually a whole number. Right. So um, let me let me kind of show you guys a couple of things here. Let's say that we had a xenon xe that had a mass of 131 okay. AMUs. I want to show how to write this a proper way. Okay, so there's a there's an isotope of xenon that has a mass of 30, uh, 131. Uh, I have to put that 131 mass number and the 54 atomic number somewhere to the left of xenon. So where, where do those go exactly? So the mass is um, the first thing. It's written on the top. Okay. The top left. So 131. The mass is always going to be the larger number. Okay. So you should be able to recognize it that way. And then the atomic number will be below. Okay. So this mass number right here refers to which mass it is. 
And this is the atomic number, which refers to that right there. And you may also see xenon-131. Okay. I could also, if I say, hey, what is, what is xenon-131? That's xenon with a mass of 131. Right. A couple different ways to look at that. Just make sure you know that atomic number is the number of protons, which are positively charged mm -hmm. in the nucleus. Right. And then the mass number is the number of protons plus neutrons. Right, because remember each one has a mass of one, so you would just add them up to find the mass. So, now, for example, how many neutrons does this xenon have? So we've got 131 minus 54, and that would tell us that there are 77 neutrons in that xenon. Just mm -hmm. And how would we find same. electrons? We didn't talk about electrons. Well, electrons, they're, it depends on if the atom is neutral or not. We assume when we first are looking at these, uh, these elements that the number of protons and electrons are equal right. in, in, a, in a neutral atom. Right. So, so remember, protons are positive, electrons are negative. If it's neutral, it means we have no charge. So mm -hmm. we have the same number of positives and the same number of negatives. Right. So, so if we have 54 protons, we would have... 54 electrons. Then we're going to, I mean, we get into ions and stuff later, what happens when those are imbalanced, but just kind of letting you guys know. That's it. Yep.